Luther. Karen? You're a black man uh, approaching a white woman. First of all, you had. Rise and shine, family. All right, look, before you watch this video, I want to give you a disclaimer, okay? I connect with this video because I remember something that happened to me a while back when I was at Walmart, okay? Now, years ago, I'm inside of Walmart. This white guy walks up to me while I'm in line to purchase my products, okay? And he's all giddy. He's joking. He's like, you know, uh, what's a question? I mean, what's a word that starts with the letter N that you never want to call a black man, right? And when he asked me this, my blood is boiling already, just beginning to boil because the word... I, I know I know what N word is coming to my mind, right? It goes about five seconds. My my blood is boiling. I'm just looking at it at this point. I don't even know what to say. And he says, "Neighbor." I'm even angrier now at this point, right? Because I'm thinking the word I was thinking is not what he said, but what he said was neighbor. So so white people don't want to call a black man a neighbor, right? Now. I wanted to go off right there on the spot, but I've always had a lot of emotional intelligence and been able to and, and being able to carry myself. So I didn't go off. What I did is I just responded with tact. I looked at him and I said, do you see um, that garden center down there? He said, yeah. I said, if you walk to it, make a left, go all the way down. You should see a water fountain. When you get to that water fountain, you'll be out my face with that bullshit. Now, he gets upset. You don't know how to take a joke. You don't know how to take a joke. And I didn't know the word gaslighting back then. You understand? But I'm sitting here like, I didn't say anything that should make him mad. But, but, but he's the person that's furious. You understand that? I, I was upset, but I didn't show it. But he got upset because he said I couldn't take a joke. Like, I'm supposed to be able to hear that and laugh and think that's funny. You understand? That's not funny at all. You understand it's deeply rooted in racism. It's not funny at all, you know, but um, this video reminds me of that because this is a, 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 a woman treating a black man a certain way, but she's treating him like he's a strange, scary black man, but he's actually her neighbor. All right. But just watch this video. It's very triggering for a lot of you guys out here who have been through this. Um, just I'm sorry you guys about to witness this, but. It's one of the many things that we go through as black men, okay? Peace. What's going on, folks? I'm driving to my mailbox. Mm -hmm. She telling me I'm speeding, telling me oh, to okay. slow down. To slow down, and he rolled down his window and he started harassing. First of all, I didn't harass you. She telling me to slow down. I said, what do you mean slow down? I said, yo, I'm just going to the mailbox. Then she goes, get the out of the middle of the road. First of all, I didn't I almost hit you. Now you're just making up stuff. No, I literally just like a Karen. You almost hit me. I did, how did I almost yeah. hit you and I'm going yeah, to the mailbox? I yeah, I'd call you a Karen when I came oh, over no. here after you oh, said no. I called the police. The Absolutely. Then you then you went on to say, oh, I'm the, the subject of the HO meeting, this and that and the other. I got liens on my house, this and that and the other. Then you start bringing up my status, who I was, my HBO, Wait, my VH1. You the one brought it up, lady. I, I did, did it. it. Right. You did it. No, no, I'm okay. fine, sir. I, first of all, I didn't almost hit her. I understand that. Just relax. You're not finna sit up here. He ran the stop sign. <laughs> well, there is no stop sign. What are you talking about? I wasn't, but I asked him to slow down, and he started. He got out of his car and started harassing me. He put his car in park. Right, because you're gonna yell at me and tell me I'm almost hit you, and I didn't. But you didn't have to get out of your. You didn't have to talk to me that way either, Karen. You're a black man uh, approaching a white woman. First of all, you had your your boy right here, your husband right here. So first of all, I don't do that type okay, of stuff. Relax. You did. You put your car in park and you came uh, after yeah, me. I, I, first of all, I didn't come at you. Yes, you, can, you did. You can stop all of that, Karen. Okay, listen. Get out of here with all of that. Listen, if you guys want me here, I can solve this. He literally came this, after me. Oh, <laughs> here she crying. There's Karen. Look at this. This is unbelievable. Swear to God, I've never been a part of nothing like this. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. Yes, I've seen it, but this is firsthand. Oh boy, as she's crying. Oh my God. This is this is real. This is real. This is real. Here you go. Here you go, sir. This is real. This is real. This is real. This is real. I've never seen it. I've seen it, but I've never been a part of this. This is real life. And now she's crying. Her husband tried to tell her to go in the house, but no, she wanted to do the whole Karen thing. So I'm going to be here with my camera to show everything. First of all, you need to stop that. You were speeding through the neighborhood. 
Yeah, it was not. I was in the garage. You're lying now because I was sitting in the garage. She said I was speak. First of all, I went. I know what you're saying. No, no, I get you. No, this is real. This is real life in 2022. This is real life Karen stuff. <laughs> And I've she crying. I've never seen. I do. I've seen it on 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 TV. I've seen it on video. But th I've never really been a part of something like this. Rise and shine, family. All right. So look, that, that was Terrell Owens, one of the best football players to ever play the game. Literally experiencing something that he probably never thought he'd have to experience. He he said he's seen it, you know, uh, displayed online before, but he's never uh, had it happen to him. I'm going to say this. He did the right things by turning that camera on, because. Uh, it, it, most people in that situation, their life would have been at stake, their freedom would have been at stake, because the person who was trying to gaslight him was trying to use every tactic they could to try to create a situation like he was violent. We're going to play this video back. I want you to see how it goes, okay? I'm going to expose exactly how, they, how she does this. Watch this. What's going on, folks? I'm driving to my mailbox. She telling me I'm speeding, telling me oh, to yeah, slow down. To slow down, and he rolled down his window and he started harassing. First of all, I already, I'm telling him to slow down. This is her actually harassing him, her talking to him. She said he rolled down his window and started harassing, uh, harassing her. See how she didn't say he spoke back to her? This is what people do. They try and inflame uh, everything that the other person does to try and victimize themselves. So her speaking to him is just fine. But him rolling down his window and speaking to her is now him harassing her. Let's go. I didn't harass you. She telling me to slow down. I said, what do you mean slow down? I said, yo, I'm just going to the map. Another thing, these people will keep doing this over and over so you can't continue what you're trying to say. You're trying to say what's happening and make, make get some clarity with what's happening. They'll continue to interrupt and try to give reason as to why they did their madness. And here you are having to answer them. So he had to stop what he was saying to say, I wasn't harassing you. Because she's not going to just let him speak. Because she knows that she's been manipulative. You understand? Watch. Mailbox. Then she goes, get the out of the middle of the road. First of all. See, here she goes again. He's talking. She's talking over him. It's because he, you almost hit me. You, I almost hit you. He said, I'm checking the mailbox. What do you mean I almost hit you? So this person's going to keep trying to justify. I'm justified in yelling at you and telling you to slow down because you almost hit me. But that, the thing is, I actually did not almost hit you. So you're lying. Number one, you see, but let's go on. I didn't almost hit you. Now you're just making up stuff. No, I literally just like a Karen. I did. How did I almost hit you? And I'm going to the mailbox. Yeah, I'd call you. See, he asked her a question. How did I almost hit you and I'm going to the mailbox? And she wants to talk about Karen more. He gave her an opportunity to explain how he almost hit her. Because he told her she made it up. Now, he could have carried on and not even cared where she got that from. But he asked her, where, where, where are you getting this from that I almost hit you? And she wants to talk about Karen. This is when someone's been attention, intentionally mis, uh, misleading. Let's continue. Karen, when I came over here after you said I called the police. Absolutely. Then you then you went on to say, oh, I'm the, the subject of the HO meeting, this and that and the other. I got liens on my house, this and that and the other. Then you start bringing up my status, who I was, my HBO, my I VH1. Your status, you the one brought it up. So she's already aware of who, who, who he was. So he's telling her you brought up my status. She still got something to say to that. Now she's saying your status doesn't matter to me. That doesn't that doesn't discount what he just said. He said you started bringing up my status. What that lets all of us know is that she's fully aware of who he is. You understand? But she wants to say, I don't care about your status. Well, the fact is you brought up my status. That's that's the facts. Why would you bring up my status? You know who I am. Let's go. Up, lady, I did it. You did it. No, no, I'm fine. Sir, I, first of all, I didn't almost hit her. I understand that. Just relax. I'm not finna sit up here. He ran the stop sign. Well, there is no stop sign. What are you talking about? So she's still lying. Apparently, they're still they're all out there outside. Terrell Owens cannot make a stop sign disappear. So he says, "Well, there is no stop sign." So everyone out now can can establish that she's a liar. We can all demonstrate it. If there's not a stop sign out there, you can't see anywhere where he ran a stop sign. Everyone can now say, "Okay, this person probably can't be trusted," right? This is if you just pull it up and it's just word uh, hearsay, you know, word against word. I wasn't, but I asked him to slow down and he started, he got out of his car and started harassing me. I asked him to slow down. Now he's in his car supposedly speeding. 
How could she ask him to slow down? She probably would have had to yell it, right? But now she says, I asked him to slow down. See, I, I asked him to slow down. Her, her stuff is just asking. It's just, you know, you know, trying to plead. But when he responds, it's harassment. But it's car in park. Right, because you're going to yell at me and tell me I'm almost hit you, and I didn't. But you didn't have to get out of your car. You didn't have to talk to me that way either. Karen? You're a black man uh, approaching a white woman. First of all, you had... This is when she revealed who she were, who she was. Now she wants to pull out narrative. Now, because the scene isn't happening the way she'd like it to, meaning everyone would have pulled up and automatically believed her because she's a white woman and he's a black man. Now she wants to try and, you know, bring this narrative out. Terrell Owens is now supposed to remember that he's a black man and she's a white, white woman when it comes to getting out of his car and talking to her. But she's not supposed to remember that he's a black man and she's a white woman when she's yelling at him. But at the end of the day, why does it matter that she's a white woman and he's a black man? Why does it matter? It's one person telling, telling someone to slow down. It's another person that's saying, I'm not bothering you. It's another person that's addressing the other person telling them to slow down. Why should they keep in their mind on if they're a black, a black man or a white woman? This is because that narrative is being spent now to create leverage. This is, this is her attacking him. It's like saying, because he's a black man, he must carefully think about how he responds to a white woman because she might feel fear. But that same white woman is yelling at him, telling him to slow down. Is she considering that he is a big black man or a black man? What's the point of all of this? These words, man, are always how we, how we try to um, create this type of leverage and this bias. Woman versus man. So, of course, he's stronger. She's weaker. Black man, white woman. The narrative, the racism narrative. White women are supposed to now fear black men because he's a black man. She's a white woman. She's supposed to fear him more. And he's supposed to think about that. What's the logic in this? This person is literally just trying to use narrative to gaslight this brother, this king. And if it wasn't the right people that pulled up and he wasn't who he was, his life could have been in danger because of this. This stuff should not be taken lightly, family. Let's continue. Your, your boy right here, your husband right here. So first of all, I don't do that type okay, of stuff. Relax. You did. You put your car in park and you came uh, out. Yeah. Did. So her husband's right there. Why isn't her husband speaking for her and validating everything that she's saying? Why is he quiet in the background? He's her husband. Now, I have wives, and it ain't no way I'm going to sit out here and let her just argue with somebody back and forth, and I don't somehow say something about this. But he's just sitting back. This is crazy. Let's continue. Me. I, first of all, I didn't come at you. Yes, you, can, you did. You can stop all of that, Karen. Okay, listen. Get out of here with all of that. But you came after me. He parked his car and got out. He came after me. See, all this gaslighting. So everybody, I guess, is supposed to stop. Throw Terrell Owens on the ground, handcuff him because he came after her. This is so unfair, man. This, this, this entitlement that this woman has to think that because she's a woman or white, that he has, to, he has to stand down and just let her yell on him or scream on him because he's a man and he's black. She wants him to play a part. In this, in this evil narrative that's been placed on all of us. She's using it for leverage, y'all. It's completely dangerous. And, and many of us have to go through this all the time. And this is why I say, as a black man, what we have to face, walking into places, being treated like you're gonna steal something, being treated like you're violent, stepping on an elevator with a white woman and she clutches her purse because she thinks you're about to rob her. But you don't hop off because it's a white woman and you don't wanna be you know, misinterpreted. You don't, want some, you don't wanna be blamed. You don't want a Karen thing to happen to you so you run from white people. But they have every right to do what they're doing. We get the media have traumatized us and caused us to feel fear for each other where it's not really appropriate or necessary. But us thinking that it's okay to act on that and, ex and expecting everybody else to play by some narrative is absolutely ridiculous. This gives anybody an opportunity to weaponize these type of narratives that, we, that, that literally we fall danger to all the time. He literally came after me. <laughs> Here she quiet. There's Karen. Look at this. He's absolutely right. See how she's screaming now? He literally came after me. And you hear all the crying, right? So she's already explained how she felt. She said this a while ago. And she was able to say this in at least a little bit better tone, right? She wasn't losing it, right? She wasn't hysterical. She was able to say, he got out of the car. He was harassing me. He rode down to the, win he rode down the window. He was harassing me. Now, wasn't what this has been said, we all got it, right? But because she's not bending reality to her will like she thought she could, 
now she starts using her emotions. The, here's where it really gets serious, guys. He literally came after me, and here's the crying. This is an attempt to pull everyone out of reality, out of logic, but into emotion. And if you can do that, this situation, it goes to hell in a handbasket real quick. Let's continue. This is unbelievable. Swear to God, I've never been a part of nothing like this. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. Yes, I've seen it, but this is firsthand. Oh boy, yeah, she's crying. Oh, and now he's on live. And now he's on live. Of course he is. This is the only way he has to protect himself. It's just him against your mind. Your toxic mind is creating him to be a villain. He's not going to hurt you at all. But in your mind, he's a black man and you're a white woman and you're doing all of this stuff to make it seem like he's being violent against you. What was a what was a traffic thing? You could have said, "Okay, he was driving reckless." That's one thing. Now you've turned him into a violent person. Of course he has his camera out. He should be recording what's happening. And while he's recording, you're putting on display exactly who you are. See, this is the great thing. If she is quiet, just giving the officer that's out there the, the details, you could say, okay, maybe she's a rational person. Let's see uh, what they uh, investigate and find out about this, right? Investigate and find out about this. But no, she's not out there being like that. She's out here being irrational, acting like she's in fear right now. He was coming out. She's talking about something that already happened. Why is she going into her emotions? You know, and so he hits record. He has to. He should. Now she's like, he's on live. Like, now nah, that's torturing her. If she's really a victim, it's good he's on live because he, he's going to expose himself, right? Why now is she playing like a victim because he's on live? If you're telling the truth, this shouldn't be a problem. It's crazy. Let's continue. Man, oh, my God. This is, this is real. This is real. This is real. Here you go. Here you go, sir. You can, this is real. This is real. This is real. This is real. I've never seen it. I've, I've seen it, but I've never been a part of this. This is real life. And now she's crying. Her husband tried to tell her to go in the house, but now she wanted to do the whole Karen thing. So I'm going to be here. This husband told her to go into the house. Why is this? Why would he tell her to go into the house? Is it because he knows that what she is saying is not rational? Is not truth? Because her husband, if he believed her, should be out here defending her. Should be saying that she is being rational and she wouldn't lie on him. But he's not doing that. He's out there, but he's standing to the side, not saying a word. And he's told her to go into the house. The only way I'm telling my wife to go into the house in that scenario is because I don't believe her. And I don't want her to cause a scene. It's crazy. Other than that, I'm out there with her, uh, speaking up for her. Because I'm not going to let him try and make her look like she's crazy she's literally still showing the behavior that terrell lawrence is recording right now so what she puts on display is what exactly what she deserves everyone can see this he's not crying under all this irrational stuff she is you really think he was a tra he was attack he was about to attack her but she wants everyone to believe that crap see it's great that we have these videos man because in the moment People might really believe that crap. We all heavily program with, with, with stereotypes and biases. At any moment, we can lean to those biases and not be fair in our decision making. But when we have these videos, we can go back and look at them. And you can see how people behave and you can see that that behavior shows that they're manipulative. You can see it. They're not a victim. They're manipulative. Let's continue. Here with my camera to show everything. First of all, you need to stop that. He was not. I was in the garage. You're lying now because I was sitting in the garage. There's an eyewitness, another person telling her that she's lying. There already wasn't any stop sign. Him rolling down his window and speaking back is not harassing. And now here's this eyewitness saying he was not speeding, so you're lying. She said I was speed. First of all, I want. I know what you're saying. No, no, I get you. No, this is real. This is real life in 2022. This is real life Karen stuff. <laughs> And I've she's crying. I've never seen. I do. I've seen it on 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 TV. I've seen it on video. But th I've never really been a part of something like this. Something like this. What's going on, folks? I'm Listen, man. That's absolutely wild. He did a he did a, he did an interview, and he said something. Let me find that interview real quick if I have it on here. As their back and forth continues with an officer on scene, yeah, and then the woman makes this is. statement. Karen. A black man. Like I said, this could have turned really bad. Like I said, I don't know where it could have gone 
had the police come in and they basically took her word for something, you know, that she said that I didn't do or what have you. Um, like I said, we've seen it a number of other times as well. Owens so, spoke exclusively to GMA overnight about the incident and that racially charged statement. If the roles were reversed, I'd probably be, probably be in jail or something to that magnitude right now, honestly. And just the statement that she made, um, obviously, um, that came out of her mouth, the comments exactly was a black man approaching a white woman. I think that kind of uh, that kind of says what you want to know, you know what I mean, about the situation. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. Yes, I've seen it, but this is firsthand. Owens is now pushing for the woman to face consequences, retweeting this petition calling for her to face jail time for making a false police report. Owens believes accountability is important here in the wake of other recent high-profile incidents of police being called on black Americans under dubious pretexts for doing mundane things from walking, napping, sitting at a Starbucks, even bird watching. I'm being threatened by a man in the ramble. Please send the cops. In that infamous case of the Central Park bird watcher, that woman was charged for filing a false police report. Owen says he's grateful for how police handled his situation. Honestly, I want to commend the Broward, you know, police, uh, those policemen that came up because this could have been, uh, this, this, this could have gone totally left um, had they not come in and handled the situation the right way. Uh, we did reach out to the woman in this incident, and we did not hear back from her. Uh, of course, we don't know what happened before the video started rolling, but a lot of people look at this. Two neighbors get into it. Mm -hmm. Somebody says something stupid. Everybody move on. Others will look at this and are immediately reminded of a deep and difficult history in this country, documented history. Okay. My advice to you guys, if you ever find yourself in this situation, record as soon as possible, okay? So my advice to Terrell Owens is I would record it before I even said a word to her. While she was still yelling in my car, I would've went on ahead and hit record before I even started speaking back because rolling down his window and speaking back was called harassment. So you have to get all of this stuff, man, because the more you can get, the better. So before you even respond, hit record, you, if that makes sense. You understand? Because protect yourself at all costs. This could've been the end of your life. It's, this was Terrell Owens. Luckily, it was someone who was well known OK, but if this was just a, a normal, a normal black man in this situation, this could have been his life. This could have been his freedom. I'm telling you guys. This is it's not cool when somebody does this. She absolutely needs to go to jail. She definitely does, because this is it's clear what was happening here. Now, I'm not saying all white people do this. It's not a white and black pe black person thing. But what that person did was try and leverage the narrative. To try and uh, make that make that per make Terrell Owens look like he was a criminal or like he was going to violate her or hurt her, okay? Everyone is going to feel fear and and all these different types of things because of uh, the media. You really can't help it. You understand? And I, I, as a black man, when I'm out in public, I can see looks on people's faces. I can see people's looks when I walk into stores. I can see people's looks, you know, when they, when I'm, I'm I'm alone with them on elevators, regardless of who they are. You know, a woman may look at me and feel fear if it's just her and me on an elevator. She may feel like, well, that's a man. I'm a woman. She may Im immediately think about all the statistics and all these, you know, home statistics that she has to worry about on a daily basis. And this fear can kick in. These things are understandable. So if I see someone clutch their purse, I can have an understanding of what's happening and not flip out. They're going through fear. But if this person tries and act, acts like I'm about to grab their purse and start screaming for help, now, this is a whole different scenario. You understand? Everything that she was doing was indicative that she was lying. She was being manipulative. On several occasions, she was proven to be wrong. You understand? And she, when she tries to use this narrative, it's to break it all the way down to where we're desensitized and can't see it for what it is. We have a hard enough time seeing each other as people. When we look at each other, it's either black, white, man, woman, big, small. What religion are you? How you dressed? It's very difficult for us to see people you understand now on the surface if you believe everybody should have a life everybody should be able to have joy uh be free to be themselves as long as they're not harming anybody if you truly believe that then every person that you're looking at is a person and has that right but what we do is we hold these biases at each other and we try to use but then we usurp those rights with our fears our hate our discrimination, our biases that have been programmed in our minds. All we do is go around and projecting onto each other. 
And then sometimes it's just downright evil. And you can tell a person's trying to create a scenario. You can tell, you can see it. And you got to look for the signs. Don't get caught up in all, in all of the hoopla and all of the magic they're trying to create. Okay. All of the crying and the, and the, uh, and the, uh, and the gaslighting and the, um, Take, taking what they say and then, and then manipulating it into something else. Speaking becomes harassing and all these types of things. You understand? When I first saw this, I'm looking at Terrell Owens out here going through this. And I'm like, man, I've always loved Terrell Owens. Always been uh, one of my favorite bats. I mean, one, one of my favorite football players of all time. Always has been. But I'm, I, I've, I've always seen him as the athlete. You know what I mean? And But now I'm looking at him as, as the person. Because I, I relate to him as a black man. Okay, I relate to that. I see that. I, I can feel that. You understand? And now it's like, I see him far beyond that. And we all need to see the person. You understand? The person. This can truly traumatize a person. So I, I truly, truly hope that you are right, man. Um, I'm sorry this happened to you. It happens to many of us. Uh, like you said, you, you've heard of it. You never expected that it would happen to you. But, man, it can happen to any of us. And we must all be prepared because it's a part of our reality, whether we like it or not. I'm so glad you hit record. I'm so glad you made this made this known to everybody. Hopefully, hopefully, we can, we can all join together and get something done about this. We should all agree that that's not right. That is not right. Sucks you had to go through that, King. But you're doing the right thing with it. Sometimes things happen to the, to the greatest of us. So we can make the greatest impact on the world. You're doing the right things, man. Stay strong. Please keep your head up. All right, peace, family.